Cardano ambassador. I am a winner for Fund 1 and Fund 2. And here's today we have George presenting his proposal. How are you today, George? Hey, Mira. How's it going? Uh, I'm really well. Looking forward to sharing what I've got so far. Uh, there's a, been a lot of changes recently over the proposal, but I think it's really interesting to go through it. That's brilliant. If you are a proposal and you have a um, project in the Catalyst, please reach out to me. I will allow you to have the same space and the same exposure of any other proposal. My goal is to show to the community as much as uh, projects I possibly can. So, George, the stage is yours. Please, you can share your screen if you want. Lovely stuff. Uh, cool. Cool. So in the start, in a few months ago, I've been starting to look at how we can think about decentralizing marketplaces. And the first kind of thing I was kind of looking at was uh, the Origin Protocol, which is a kind of good inspiration to look at. They've been looking at uh, decentralized D shops. So they've been making a decentralized shop for products and swag. And that kind of gave me the inspiration from my experience in working in services and seeing what they're doing to think about, okay, what can be done in the services space and um, for decentralizing those marketplaces. After kind of going into that and looking into that last few months and coming getting closer to the Fund 3 proposal, I could, I could kind of articulate and make a white paper that went through all those kind of problems. And what I kind of worked out with marketplaces after making that kind of white paper and articulating it and making sure that this is a problem that makes sense is that at the moment we're a bit too soon on marketplaces and there's quite a good few reasons for that. Uh, marketplaces are notoriously kind of hard to start. They have the chicken egg problem. Um, so it takes a lot of funding to kind of get those started. There's also kind of the problem in crypto right now that there's still kind of still fairly low wallet adoption. There's still a kind of low usage of crypto for commerce transactions. So the environment for getting a marketplace started would kind of have this kind of same issue if you need a lot of capital, which might need investment. And then you're kind of in the same problem of needing to make a return for investors rather than trying to focus on lowering the costs and decentralizing and making everything open source. So after um, I applied with the kind of um, approach of marketplace, it very quickly became apparent that that kind of end goal, it makes sense. It's an important kind of evolution, similar to kind of like uh, decentralizing Facebook, making decentralized search, like all these kind of like products, we want to make more of a utility, push them into protocol. Um, that, that's going to take time. And it's looking at, okay, where is the crypto right now? Where's the ecosystem? And where are we trying to get to? So after, and a shout out to Chris from Reach um, for giving me some good feedback, because he um, he actually was one of the first persons who kind of said, um, just focus on identity, just look at identity. I think obviously what you're doing makes kind of make sense, but um, identity on itself is a big enough problem on its, um, on its own. And after kind of looking into the self-sovereign identity space, it made sense just to um, dive into them, have a look. So um, for reference, there's the um, white paper on the slides for Serve Network that I made that kind of looks through and articulates some of the problems in marketplaces right now, some of the market kind of position and a potential solution for that. And it was good to do that at the beginning to kind of articulate, okay, is this problem worth solving at some point? Um, and as a good inspiration point, Origin Protocol's um, white paper is linked there as well. I think they're really good to look at as well as an alternative. They're more focused on the products and more kind of simple transactions. So like... Um, uh, they've got kind of, they mention Uber, kind of those kind of rides where you don't need as much context and trust. It's like products, a different kind of use case. Um, but again, really kind of useful to kind of see how they're kind of approaching that. Um, so marketplace is too soon. That kind of led me down the next path in, in the last kind of six weeks because it's been a very fast iteration from starting with this marketplace idea and thinking, okay, I need to scale this back. What is the actual kind of, what makes sense to do right now? And that kind of took me to towards professional profiles um, so at the moment, uh, there's a lot of work um, that's been going on for a long, long time in the self-sovereign identity space. And uh, you've probably seen a few videos from Charles and there's lots of different companies working on this, both in the permissionless with um, Ethereum and different build-ups and wallets on that with self-sovereign identity. There's also on permissioned and there's Hyperledger. There's a, a lot of resources on that and that's been an ongoing thing. Um, a lot of uh, value is um, starting to get to this mature stage. So we've got things like the uh, W3 did did model the did documents and also the verify verifiable credentials. Those are getting quite mature now. And uh, what was good with scaling back to the professional profiles, I've just been thinking and looking into this and kind of looking at okay, where how's, how how professional profiles kind of useful. And uh, on the image that I've kind of added, 
that there's, there's a lot of different ways that you could kind of get value from the data for professional profiles. Uh, advertisement is probably a good one to go through with like the Brave browser. For instance, if you have kind of all of your professional data, similar to Facebook, Facebook wouldn't be as useful as it is at the moment if the advertisers couldn't target people very specifically. If they had to target everyone and they had that um, a lack of data, um, it wouldn't be as useful as a tool as it is for you know really focusing on your niche. Now, as Brave's kind of grown to around, I think it's around 25 million users right now, uh, as that continues to grow, it's going to be more, more and more useful for them to be able to say, okay, I want to focus on this segment of the Brave browser target market. And if um, people are willing to share that data so they can kind of become part of that cohort, they could start getting value from that data and being paid for it. So the marketplace is one idea of obviously where you need a professional profile and you're going to be tapping into that ecosystem. But there's lots of other ways that a professional profile could be attached to an existing service. And then for the professional to get value from that data um, at the present kind of moment, you've kind of got like LinkedIn that kind of have control over that network of professionals and they kind of deal with professional data of what you do, the skills you have, you know, the endorsements, all this kind of like professional kind of side data. And there's quite a, a long history of them kind of rejecting competing products, similar to Facebook in, in the same light of they, you know, if there is a competing product that's trying to get access to that API, it's very easy to say no, like, you know, this competes with, this goes against our terms of services, our private, you know, these policies. And, you know, we don't, we're not going to introduce this competition when we can easily prevent it. So that's kind of this closed kind of centralized problems we kind of have. But with these kind of decentralized professional profiles, you can kind of help to solve that problem where if I want to be really private with my data, I can be, I can, I can be like, okay, I don't want to link it up to Brave Browser or anything else. I don't, I don't need that. I don't want that value. I want to be very private. You know, my approach to using this and managing my data is very different from maybe another person who's like, okay, no, I'd rather maximize on the value. So I think there's um, having that choice in the future is going to be where a lot of value is going to come from professional, like a standard for professional profiles where people have the choice of how they want to use it. You know, if they don't want to be completely private, they can, if they want to try and maximize and return, absolutely can. Um, as an example, because in front free, and I think it's quite important, is this N all the NFT kind of proposals. So let, let's let's do an example of that. Uh, so let's say you've got you know a list of NFTs on this marketplace, and the NFT artist is linked to that by one of their professional profiles. They could, in that in that kind of listing, just have be like, okay, I'm available to do like um, company work. So you know, if I, my company wants a set of items for a game, or I wanted my own NFT made for you know some a piece for me, like something that's personal, it's like more of a service. So they may have made their own custom NFT items and that's kind of what they do, but they may want to extend that and then have, have you know, access to kind of work with them. So this could be like a really beneficial model for both the marketplace itself, because there could be a affiliate based model where, you know, I'm an NFT artist, I want to, you know, do more of my work and I'll, I'll work with businesses. And this is kind of like the criteria to work with me. I could add filters to be like, okay, um, I'm only looking for projects of a certain size or, you know, oh, I want to work in a certain market. If you fit that criteria, reach out, make a little proposal of like how we could work together and, you know, what kind of services you'd like to do. So it wouldn't kind of, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for the NFT marketplace to make all that infrastructure for like having a perfect, this kind of pr profile for um, the artists when they could kind of tap into infrastructure that kind of deals, deals with that for them. So whether it's a brave or, or these um, NFT marketplace, I think there's a lot of options there for how you can take value, you know, have this infrastructure that just instantly gives value to these services and protocols. Um, I think that's the, the nicest, most recent example of the NFT one, because that's a, that's a really popular type of proposal in Fun Free. There's, a, I think there's like five, six I saw, saw when I was scrolling through, and I think some of them may have merged at this point. I'm not too sure. Um, so one of the issues with the professional profile and things to think about that kind of led to self sovereign identity is you often need to like verify you are a person that you are able to work you're a certain age, you have a driver's license, that you have certain criteria that you can do what you need to do. And this is where the professional profile is gonna be very tightly linked with self, the self-sovereign uh, identity space. Um, and that kind of led me down to the kind of next side of just looking into the self-sovereign identity and really kind of going into that. Um, I'm still in the, in the flux of going through the, um, the W3 standards. I'm looking at some of the papers. I'm starting to really look at the wallets. So I went from this marketplace through to now on the self-sovereign identity side. And the questions I'm asking is, okay, so the professional profile is going to need to this self-sovereign identity. It's going to, you know, there's going to be cases where people want to know that this is actually this person that it's, you know, you have certain credentials or criteria for them to work, you know, work on a transactional basis or in a job or in whatever context that, you know, they're going to be working. Um, 
And where I am with this now is that maybe there actually needs to be a professional profile standard. So the most recent updates on my proposal, I've been talking about this needs for a professional profile, but I've even had to step back again from that and look at, okay, actually there might be needs to be a standard um, because when you look at like uh, the professional, the self-sovereign identity kind of standard, you have like these, the did, the did resolvers and how that, how it's um, architected is that you can, it can be done on every, any blockchain. So you're going to have resolvers that can deal with how to do it with Ethereum and how to do it with sovereign and, you know, eventually with Cardano and all it's interoperable in the way that, you know, we can just use anything you want. And that same kind of criteria and thought process, I think needs to be taken forward, same with a professional profile or even like a social profile. Like it makes sense for it to follow the same approach of, you know, that every, everyone should be able to use this. Everyone should be able to decide what data they want to store, how, you know, where they want to store it. It doesn't make sense for it to be like, for, for me to make something that says, oh, this needs to be um, strictly in Cardano or strictly there. That wouldn't make sense in the open source kind of interoperable ethos of self-sovereign identity and owning your identity and being able to move it and use it how you want. So this is this is kind of where I'm meaning at the moment. I'm kind of spending a lot of time in looking and kind of understand uh, would the professional profile work, um, work well within the same DIS standard? Would it need to be a separate built on top? That Those kind of answers, I'm, that's what I'm looking at right now. So that's it's obviously going to take a little time. I think the, um, and this sec sec section of work, um, this section of work is going to be just personal time that me looking into it. I don't think, I'm not sure whether this is something that Catalyst necessarily needs to fund, but it is something that I need to uh, find resources for from myself, just spending time on it and also communicating with the self-sovereign identity community to see who's interested in kind of helping with this, kind of getting some feedback. There's gonna be a lot of collaboration and working out, does the standard, you know, does standard make sense here? What kind of, um, what kind of documentation needs to be done here so then it can, can be kind of make make something that's more universal, what kind of work needs to be done. And then after that's going achieved and there's kind of some agreement on that and more collaboration in the open source community, at that point, then I can start using the funding from fund three to start actually making the implementation that kind of works with Cardano. So this is a very recent, like last two weeks, I've kind of realized the importance of making sure I don't make something that's got some vendor lock-in or is opinionated and it's not, it's not being collaborated with to make an effective thing. So um, yeah, I think that covers that. And then, so to kind of think about the eye of the deal future is if we have have this kind of uh, standard for like professional profiles, then that can be worked on by anyone in the community. It's completely open. Anyone can build it. The wallets, the civic, all those kind of identity wallets. I, I, I see, I see a, a world where these kind of wallets have um, the ability to do your self-sovereign identity, your personal stuff, your government, your issuing your credential stuff, but they also might also start thinking about your professional profile stuff. So you can start managing in these wallets your professional profile which would be great. Um, then, then you can kind of manage a lot of different things in a single wallet. And it might be the case that they're separate, that's together, it's not exactly gonna be clear now. But once you kind of have that kind of ownership, then you can then start plugging that data into these kind of protocols, these services and have these implementations in whichever blockchains, um, whichever blockchains you wanna have um, these created in. And that's when you can start really compounding this kind of like self-sovereign identity, professional identity, and all these kind of extra services can build on top. So as obviously back to the initial example I came into this proposal with is marketplaces. Once you kind of have this professional profile and identity kind of side built up, then marketplaces become a lot more um, viable because if you have, for instance, a index, a like decentralized index of all of these types of professionals of this certain profession, then suddenly you don't have the same chicken egg problem. If you're a developer, you could just do like make a front, you know, the front end that kind of presents and makes it, you know, interaction or, uh, like a SaaS tool for like, you know, doing the flow of working with this professional and you have just instant access to this kind of decentralized graph of different professionals. So if you can get the supply side on and have the incentives right, then you have a really quite a powerful um, tool to, you know, enable a lot more applications to be built on top. So I, when I actually started this proposal, it was kind of firmly in the DAP side. And it made sense in there, in there. but as, as it went on and I kind of learned more and looked in the self sovereign identity space, now it's kind of like mapping over to like kind of the, the um, developer ecosystem kind of side as well, because this infrastructure kind of enables kind of all this extra stuff that comes on top. The things like DeFi, the Brave Browser, these are things that could plug into the professional profile, but it also enables like the, you know, recruitment or these marketplaces and all these kind of other dApps that other people can build on top of it. So it is infrastructure in a way, and it, especially as open standard stuff, that's completely like an open source, just ev it helps everyone. And I, th I think that kind of flow makes sense for the moment, but it is an enabler. So it could also go down the infrastructure route in terms of where it was in fund three, which is 
progressed quite um, a lot. So some of the other kind of benefits of these professional profiles is like, let's say like a girl I met when I was traveling once is um, she was a doctor, but she was like a massive fan of scuba diving. And when you think of like LinkedIn, LinkedIn and like, you know, how you work is like you generally optimize for like the, you know, this career path. Like, you know, I'm a developer and I have my career history, but some people like, like to, you know, it's, it can be very difficult to pick the right career path. And sometimes you might be trying a lot of different things. So I think it's going to be really beneficial for if people can have multiple professional profiles, they can kind of maintain these, you know, different identities and then build up as much as they want to. So you could have one that's, you know, your medical career and then one that's on scuba diving and you built and you can put this kind of passion and effort into either of those profiles and link them to where you want to. <clears throat> You're not going kind to, of, you know, so sort of like completely down one path if you have to kind of stick with having this one LinkedIn profile, this kind of profile for this one thing. And then you can't be, you know, mixed. I see it being a lot more fluid, more fluid in the future where you could have, you know, at some point you're working three days a week on something and two days a week on something else. And you're building up that reputation and that, you know, that online presence with multiple profiles. That makes a lot of sense. I think people want that kind of flexibility. Um, doing the same thing isn't, you know, the, the right path for everyone. Uh, the next kind of thing is that I think people are going to have uh, more, you know, want to have more privacy. So for instance, you think like, you know, for a developer, it makes sense for me to be, I want to be, make sure I'm attached to that, you know, that graph of, you know, I'm available. Here's my skills. This is what I'm offering. Here's the criteria that I want to work in. Here's, you know, here's the things I really want to focus on. Here's the markets I'm interested in. I want people to find me. And that's my thing. And, you know, I, I make sure I'm added onto those kind of, um, you know, that, that data flow, but there might be something else I want to be, be more, a lot more private on. I could be, you know, doing on carpentry or there's, you get really, you know, you know, more interesting things like naked cleaning or, or something where like you don't want to be public or something that you do. And, you know, how you, how you share and do that is kind of up to you. So having that control of like, or oh, I want to add it to this kind of really open system, or I want to be a bit more closed and it's kind of like, you know, much more private. I think having that control is going to be really valuable in the future as well. So you've just got to kind of got multiple levels of control, multiple profiles, multiple levels of control. Um, and as an exa another example, let's say this, this more business, more business, getting more business and control. So let's say back to the NFT example. Uh, I think there's going to be some NFT artists that are going to be super popular, just like, you know, you have the, you know, the best of the best in football, the best of the best in any kind of uh, market. Um, it doesn't, the marketplaces right now don't really kind of cater for this kind of like changing dynamic of you get these top tier kind of, these are the best of the best. And, and, you know, these people who are just starting out trying to build up the skills. If I'm the best of the best and I've got a, a really full backlog of like potential opportunities and things I can work on, then I'm not willing to probably offer like a 15% commission affiliate, like affiliate fee for, you know, you finding me work. Um, and the size of the deals much be, also might be very different. So for the professionals to be able to say, here's my rate, if you find me work, this is the rate I'm willing to pay. And then it's an open market in the way that you could have these marketplaces or these SaaS tools or any of these kind of applications that can be integrate this kind of professional profile and be like, yeah, I'm interested. You're, you're the best of the best. I'm going to try and find you clients. And I understand that you're, you're, you, you mostly find um, big clients and you're going to have, you know, it's going to be, you know, a small percentage of a larger pie. But I, I have the funnel to find those people for you. Whereas another person will say, okay, we're going to try and do that anyway, but we're a marketplace. So we just do everyone. And, you know, we might prioritize the ones that are, you know, need more work and they're willing to offer a bigger affiliate fee. So I think having that dynamic where the professional is in control of like, this is what I want to offer. I'm not kind of like, I don't have to follow these policies as the marketplaces or, you know, just be these kind of strict ways of finding business. It's actually, it can become a lot more open and self-control. It's like, okay, here's what I'm offering. Here's all the kind of criteria up to you. Like whoever wants to help me and get involved completely up to you. Um, and I think that's that, like a really exciting kind of future and difference between kind of like thinking of LinkedIn and marketplaces now is that you are really kind of confined to those systems and what they offer and the, and the fees and the data access and the getting value from that data. It's, it's very closed and very restrictive. Whereas once you kind of take that ownership and you can have the option to kind of set those dials, I think there's a lot of opportunity for things that built on top. Same with like DeFi, the things that kind of layer on top of these things, I think are really quite powerful. So I, yeah, I think that kind of covers, there's been a lot of changes. <laughs> Starting with our marketplace and getting to here in six weeks has been quite, um, yeah, mentally stimulating also. <laughs> uh, but I think I, it's kind of getting to the right path of, we kind of need to think about the standards of this before we can get to something that's going to be really useful as a base for all these other things that I think th that can come along. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's where I am right now. Um, yeah, hopefully that was a fairly good um, overview of all the changes and what I'd like to work on over the next kind of few weeks on it. Cool. All right, I don't know if I can hear you. One sec. 
Yeah, cool. Okay, you're back. Uh, I have, I was listening here to you and I was going on in my thoughts and I think, where did this idea come from? You wake up one day and the idea was there. What was going on? What is the line yeah, of so thought from your main, your first idea and then now, like? Yeah, so I guess, I mean, I, so I've worked on like two different starts before. I've been a developer and I've also kind of worked on my own things before. So like, I've always been obsessed with like, I just want to try and do something that, you know, helps people and it's like, that I can just sink into. So I've always kind of been looking for something. So being proactive always helps as one thing. And then two is just like, um, as soon as March hit with the coronavirus, I just kind of sunk into crypto again. I was like, I, in the 2017, 18 time, um, I kind of was seeing the benefits of crypto, but it was, it, you know, so somebody who was a cryptographer and like, you know, I couldn't understand the blockchain technology too well. Like, it was very hard to work out what's the winning team right now. What's like, where, you know, it didn't, we weren't there with the technology. I could see the potential, but I was like, what's the incentive and then the growth lever here? I was just like, this, this makes so much sense, but we're not there yet. When it, it's not going to get that growth. And then as soon as the March COVID time hit, I was like, okay, that's just give you the best macro trigger in the world. Like that's it. I'm all in like if, from anything like financial assets, every, everything I've got time, money, crypto. And obviously it's, you know, been really um, just dive deep and I loved it. Um, but that kind of led me to things like I saw like the origin origin protocol and I really like, I really like what they're doing. They kind of focus on like a DeFi stable coin. So they're kind of focusing on the things that have got product fit right now, like, you know, DeFi, but seeing how, you know, they were thinking about marketplaces and reading their white paper kind of inspired me to think, okay, like, you know, I'm working in a local services marketplace at the moment. So I kind of have that experience and I, you know, I can see how they work and I see the problems like very hands-on and, you know, I can see this isn't the future of like where this needs to be. And there's, there's a lot of, like everyone knows, there's a lot of problems with, you know, centralized tech and, some of the systems now. And when I started to break that down, I was like, okay, this actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and it was up to December. I was like, okay, marketplace, marketplace. And then over the last six weeks, it's just been crazy. It's like, okay, now I'm just going to self sovereign identity. I'm going into here. And there's, there's, a, there's still a lot to do. Like I can't wait to start reaching out to the self sovereign identity guys because there's going to be a lot to talk about and see what they think. There's, there's people in that space who've been working on in, in identity for like 15 years. Um, so it's, there's going to be some really interesting combos, hopefully. And um, we'll drop but yeah, go yeah I, I think that's kind of how I got to the kind of marketplace and kind of evolved it from here. It's, it's all kind of quite fluid. Um, DeFi has obviously been an interesting one for me as well. Like I've been looking at that. That's like the product market fit one. If I wasn't working on this, I'd be finding out how can I help with liquid or, or something. I'd be like, how can I help? Because this has got product market fit. This makes sense to work on. Same as the self-solving identity side. These things I can see all making traction. And this professional profile stuff, I think, is just, just on the cusp of like self-solving identity is going to help. And, you know, all these things are kind of the infrastructure is kind of very, very close to being there. So it's kind of, we're very near the timing and timing is going to be really important. It's like any years before wouldn't make any sense, but we're getting to that point where I think it makes sense to start working on this kind of open standard for this profile stuff. And then we can hopefully get to this kind of marketplace idea, which I kind of started with and came from, you know, all the, you know, searching and looking around and yeah. How yeah, much money that's... you're asking from the fund? Quite, yeah. So it, I, for the reasons um, with the DeFi stuff and the NFT, because I think those are like much bigger drivers of growth right now, my kind of thought process was, even if I could get funding for more that meant I could work on this full time, I don't think it necessarily makes this the best kind of um, approach for the funding and helping the community grow as fast as possible, because that's, that's a winner for everyone. We want, we want you know, the Cardano network and, and everyone involved for it to be, you know, grow as fast as possible to bring most people in. And I don't think my project at this specific, very specific moment, is the exact kind of um, project that will, you know, generate that growth. I think DeFi will bring in so many people, it will then lead them to, you know, a professional profile. And there's kind of, the, what's the next thing, you know, the next thing they can get involved with. Okay, I've got a DeFi product. I've got my, my self-sovereign identity wallet mixed up. What else can I do? Oh, the wallet also has got a professional profile. And I can set up that and start linking it. So the order of events is actually quite important. And because of that, I was like, okay, well, the amount of funding isn't massively important, important right now. It's more you know, are people interested? Do they understand? You know, do they see the value in what I'm trying to do? Does anyone want to collaborate? Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be the one that makes a standard on my, by myself, like thinking about if there's a professional profile standard, like if that standard is going to be created, it's definitely not just going to be me. There's going to be a lot of collaboration on that. And I'm always going to be looking for like collaborators on that. Like it's, um, it's going to be, you know, pretty complex and in depth, like anything. Um, but I can look at train of thought there. Uh, so Moving, Do you are you looking for partners? I saw in your proposal yeah. there was a few few positions. Could you tell me yeah, more so about it? I, I guess I guess when I kind of made those changes for the professional profile side, at that time I was on the mindset as like, okay, I'm going to be making this professional profile. I'm going to need to 
I've been, you know, I've read like a, a book on Haskell. I've been looking at this. I've been looking at, yeah, I've read did some Solidity before, like looking into that. So I've been seeing the options and, you know, getting closer to being able to start attacking that. But obviously as I've been going to self sovereign identity space, then, uh, you know, um, that actual proposal there has even changed from now. It's like, okay, actually now I wouldn't, it doesn't make sense for me to like look for a smart contractor developer because really what I need to be doing now is really honing down on this, uh, on the did and these did, um, the did and the VC, the verified credentials and looking at those um, standards and being like, okay, how does this match up with professional profiles? How could a standard for that? I actually need to talk to people in the W3, the did all the self sovereign identity space now. That's, that's actually more where I need to collaborate because I need to work out what, what needs to be done here to make like a, a, a system and a, and a structure that's helpful for everyone. So once that's kind of like, it's clear on that kind of path, then I come back to what was um, what I was thinking about a few weeks ago with when I started the proposal of like, okay, I need to think about, does anyone want to come in for creating the smart contract stuff? And at this stage, after looking at the self-sovereign identity space, I don't, I don't, I couldn't like put a, you know, it's going to take a month. It's going to take, it could take, you know, multiple months. I don't know how long it's going to take to kind of, you know, I think it would obviously take quite a few months. And that's the thing. And, you know, I'm just going to be spending almost spare time on it, trying to get to this point where, okay, now we're ready to make this Cardano implementation of this professional profile standard. And it makes every, everything makes sense. Like we understand, you know, where, where it comes in, where it comes in with self how it mixes together, how, how it could be used in wallets, you know, thinking about all the infrastructure and what's going on at the moment, basically. I see. And is there any question in your proposal on idea scale that I'm also going to leave the link here in the description? Any question that somebody asks you that make you curious and you would like to clarify it now in video, because I understand that in video people understand there's a better way to understand complex information if you want to uh, explain something from there. Uh, is it for people to ask me questions? You know that uh, people can ask you questions on idea scale. I wonder, yeah. is there any questions that would you like? Would you like to clarify, like something that someone asks you and is very complex to address on idea scale because the platform is not really, really user friendly, and something that you yeah, would like address um, here in video? Yeah, I don't. There wasn't anything too, I think, necessarily complex at this stage, but just because I've kind of, it's not really at that kind of stage of. Um, let's say um, comparison to liquid, they obviously have like a technical imp implementation of like, this is how this is going to be spec'd out. This is how this mathematical equation is applied to our, our product because um, I kind of went from a marketplace to this kind of, this kind of phase um, change of scope. And there's, there's nothing being too complex on the technical side that people have been asking about. And um, I've been seeing, there's also been concerns of things like I can't, it's been hard for me to be able to say, oh, this will be done in three months, this and that because of this adaptation and this thing is all these changes. But there has been obviously some reviews I've seen in the um, replies from the Catalyst um, advisors. And obviously I've been looking at those, um, but there's, there's nothing been to, in terms of like the technical side that's been an issue so far because of, of where it is. I mean, it's, it's just a natural response of where the project is right now. It kind of needs, it needs more collaboration, more kind of thought of like, you know, how, how should this be approached? And then it's going to get more technical as that's, you know, that standard starts to think about and then how it's going to be implemented. So I think, the standard things are very separate thing from Cardano that's going to be collaborating with the SSI community. And then when we get to the more sort of Cardano implementation, that's when I, I'd like to, this fund would kind of fund that. And then I would have um, a specification and then I'd be going back to community be like, this is where we are with it. I collaborated with the persons that were available and then you'd fund kind of the next step. That, that was kind of also the kind of reason I wanted to make sure I asked for such a small amount because it's like, I can't say exactly what's going to happen here. And, I, and I'm trying to minimize the risk for the, the fund. Like if, mm -hmm. if I, if, if I'm, if I'm a strikeout and nothing, you know, nothing comes for it, then it's such a low risk for the community. It's like, okay, I, you know, I like what this guy's trying to do. It's a small risk. Let's see what happens kind of thing. That That's the kind of like, you know, where I want to come from mm -hmm. rather than, you know, be like a big risk. Like, you know, I need $50,000 and, you know, I, I haven't, I can't answer you the questions on the, on the open standards stuff yet and the, the professional standards because it's so early on. It's like, once it's more concrete and it's like, yeah, we've got that. Yeah, we've got that. Then I can be like, okay, it's, it's very clear. We need this developer for this. We need someone who really understands this. And then, you know, then you could be a bit more precise. We can ask, I can, you know, I could ask for a bit more. Um, and that makes sense. But for right now, it's just going to, I just want, it's more of like a, you know, just showing it, sharing the community, small kind of allocated funds. Let's kind of work, collaborate with this together. Hopefully people are like, they can see this value that, you know, this will just be infrastructure for hopefully their own projects. And then eventually it's marketplaces, recruitment, um, recruitment marketplaces, all, all these different um, tools. And that kind of brings the community together. It doesn't make sense to be able to do this in silo. So it's a it's, it's more of a collaboration um, and just getting the ball rolling on this side of um, the ecosystem, I think. I that's, see. That's I think you are thing. seeing things ahead and time 
to when we need the type of service that will be there for us. Is it what you're trying to say? When the marketplaces yeah, yeah. come around and everything starts popping exactly. up, you already exactly. got the things ready for that moment. And how, exactly. much are you, uh, how much are you asking in dollars? Uh, 3960 so yeah, I, I don't know if it's, it's, not, it's definitely not a record. I think there's what there's five hundred dollars on the fund two one um, by one of the I think it's a, a I think it's Sebastian from Amago. I think he asked for something. Um, so yeah, not not a lot. I, I it's even if I asked for like uh, twelve thousand or something more, it wouldn't it it wouldn't probably be enough for me to be going to be full time in it at the moment. It's kind of part time, and I'm trying to mm-hmm. find like when it's more concrete and a collaborative SSI, and I see a path, and it, you know I can go kind of roadmap it out a bit more. And maybe, maybe there is funding for the standard side. Maybe I find, I talk to W3 and different people and they say, oh, you can get funding from here. And then, great. And then, then I could maybe go full time on it. And that'd be, lo- that'd be lovely because, you know, like, this is all I want to work on. I think I've got lots of different, um, another thing of things I've been thinking about with the marketplace is I actually like how, thinking about changing how we work with each other, like equity models, this, all these kind of sides. The transactional side makes a lot of sense to work on initially with like, just I'm selling a service, here's a smart contract. It has dispute resolution and you, know, you go in the escrow all these kind of things can be much more simple. It's just kind of transactional, but there's lots of things that I think can be improved and, you know, how we work together in general, but that's like, especially now, so far down the line, I, I've not even, you know, I don't even mention it too much, but like, there's lots of things I'd like to work on, <laughs> but I've had to scale back me like, okay, this is where the community is now. This makes sense. This is what would, this would benefit a lot of people and opens the door. So um, yeah, like um, I think that's, I think it's the right approach. <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you very much for your time to being here and, presenting your proposal for the community. We really appreciate that. Is there any consideration or you would like to give a shout out to anyone that helped you around with Catalyst? You know, it's so many people working in Catalyst and help each other if you want yeah. to name some. I mean, first of all, of course, you, Marie, like, thanks, for, thanks for doing this. This is like a massive, I've already seen some of the, the previous ones you've done. This takes time. Really appreciate you doing this. Um, it's good for me to do this. I'd like to do this more. I'm obviously not a natural at doing this, but I think it's just a case of just you've got to keep trying to do it. I think video content's a really good way of um, going through communication. I, I've got an, like a background. I love to do like, I like quite like doing documentation and, and thinking about it that way. I'm quite articulate in that way. I'm not as good at speaking and I'm, I'm nowhere near Charles and he's done it for years. Like it'd be great to get to that point where you can just articulate things really well. But this is, this is the step forward just to start and start collaborating and talking. Yeah. Um, definitely thanks to like everyone in the Catalyst team, like uh, going through and obviously uh, doors going through like, everything that needs to be done and, all the information that's been really, it's been quite, Fund 3 has been, you know, I can see the, you know, the progress from Fund 2 to Fund 3, it's getting a lot more smooth and slick um, and it's continuation of that. I think I've, I've enjoyed the Discord a bit as well. So I've been talking to some of the guys in there, um, Steve, um, talking through kind of saying some of the problems that, you know, and some of the, the issues that are going to kind of arise. You've got this kind of multi-communication side and mm-hmm. there's obviously a lot of work to be done on that. There's, it's not, it's not a finished product. And that all I can do is, you know, if I see a problem, I'm just instantly saying it and it's like, here's something that I'm, I'm thinking. And so getting involved with the process, I can get, get some feedback in that way, which is quite useful. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah, brilliant like it. that you're here with us. Uh, it's just found a tree and we're going to have many more. Did you see the value for the next fund? Yeah, a, a million. A million. I, it's interesting, it'd be interesting how it all segments out of like different sections and stuff and it, like what it's going to you know drive into the ecosystem. It's, it's exciting. Like, uh, and I, 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 it, is it double again after that? I don't know when it stops doubling and even if it stays the same, if it stays at a million or two million, it's like, Every six weeks, that's a lot, you know, it's like, it's like, it's going to bring people in, like. Uh, yeah, we are setting like, the stage for the entire community industry to see how we do governance, you know, and it's why I'm very happy to do the videos I do, because six months on the line, a year in the line, they are watching us talking what we're talking here today, but we are far away in the line and we get so much thing done, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I think there's going to be a, a incredible amount of change. I will see whether we stay on idea scale or we, we move something else. We change. I think there's there's so much. Um, yeah, there's going to be so much feedback and yeah. I, I've the size is size this idea scale thing can grow to. I think I like it's, it's very very hard to imagine what it's going to become because like how I like I'm thinking like how are we going to manage like you know ten thousand fifty thousand hundred thousand how are we like how is that going to work? And there's going to be so many proposals like. It's going, to, it's going to be you know, these kind of layers of like um, people who are specialized in this and it's going to be really interesting to see how it works. But I, I do think, and I also like also what in, in the Ethereum community, what Gitcoin are doing and the quadratic funding, I've been looking at that. I, all of this space is just great. Like, I think this is, this is, this is the way and it's a, such a catalyst for growth for, um, no pun intended, it's a, such a catalyst for growth for this kind of new ecosystem. Because it doesn't like, it, for my project, it didn't make sense to go to like a VC and, you know, go that kind of process. Like, well, 
I don't want to guarantee a return and be restricted to this. It's like, I'm happy to be, you know, go on a much lower, you know, at some point if I get funding, I'm, I don't need mind what I'm on salary. It's just a passion thing. Like there will be business opportunities in the future of it, but like the change that we can make and how fast we can do it because it's software, like the propagation of how fast we can actually change the world is just incredible. And I, I think like, it's, it's going to be very exciting to see how it, things happen in the next two years. And that's why like, I'm really bullish on being part of the crypto full on and just like seeing what happens because software, it, you can adopt software so quickly. Once the, you know, the right um, incentives are there, like, you can't stop it. Right? So it's yeah, very exciting. Like that's, that's why I was like, I need to get into this now, even though I'm just changing my idea, like left, right. In the last six weeks, it keeps changing, but I was like, you got to get into this. Like this is, this is what I want to work on. Like this is what I'm passionate about. But it's it's there's so much going on. It's like trying to mentally process everything. Oh, it's um getting there, getting there. I, I think I think I'm getting to a point I, where I can like this is my thing. But I really it, it like the time. fact. I really like the fact you're very excited. So thanks again for being here, and I will link in the description the link for your proposal. Please come back. I'm gonna give you the link. Come back and answer the questions because people come around and they do ask questions about the proposal. Thank you very much, George. Yeah, thanks. I'll be in the comments. Thank you.